Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're going to look at how you can load a flight plan in the Embraer 175, also known as the e 175, which is available in Early Access, also known as BIDA, and has been released a few days ago. So to do that we are using Simbrief because that's one of the programs which you can use, however there are multiple other ones which you can use if you prefer to use a different one. So I'm going to Make sure that I'm using the new uh, flight. You can see that sometimes there are some issues with uh, Simbrief because they're on the high load. So that could be that there are simply, I would say, some functionalities like the flight maps, uh, which are temporary, uh, not loaded by default uh, because yeah, server load is too high. So they're decreasing them. So first of all, we're gonna, I would say, specify the uh, airline. In this case, uh, KLM uh, one, that free KLM, that's what that's the airline, and then a flight number. Allow, well, let's normally would let's say pick an official one, so let's pick a 467 in this case. And then we're going to depart from one of the airports, right? You can see that I already, I would say, use Simbrief a lot to plan my flights. In this case, we're gonna uh, select uh, Amsterdam as a source airport, and we're gonna select uh, LFBO, which is uh, Bordeaux Airport, which is in France which is known for uh, Asobo, right? Because Asobo is also uh, located there. It will by default set the uh, alternate airport, right? The alternate airport that could be due to the fact that um, I would say in this case, uh, Bordeaux is closed. And the other nice thing which you can see or you might have seen it is that you can hover over which will bring you some information about the weather, right? Also known as the meter data. And this will tell us uh, wind, the wind direction, the temperatures, etc. It will give us also some more information as you can see. Uh, this is also something uh, I didn't see earlier in SimBrief, but I think it's there already for I see, a little bit longer time. Then it will show me the date and the Zulu time, right? The departure time. And then it will ask me, okay, hey, which aircraft do I want to use? And that's something you need to keep in mind is uh, based on this, it will set the performance data. You can also import custom uh, airframes, as you can see here. But what they are recommending for the Embraer 175 is simply to load it uh, from the uh, default list. So let's see uh, if it's uh, there. Uh, not sure what the name is but let's see if we can find it crg here it is emb 175 also known as e175 you can select it and based on that it will load the uh, performance data right so if i would click open aircraft editor i could create my own ones uh, but in this case it's not required because the Embraer 175 is already part of that then going to that, we're gonna go to the advanced options where we're gonna define the climb rate profile, which is only one. And also the cruise altitude, which is set to CI and it's being calculated automatically uh, if you set it to auto. However, you can also set it to a default value or to preferred value if you want, but I always select uh, auto. The same is applicable for the uh, descent profile and the view factor, I'm simply calling it like this. Uh, the uh, registration, that's the registration number of the aircraft itself. Uh, so in this case, uh, N175SB, right, for Simbrief. And the 175 refers to the aircraft itself. This is the registration which you can also put into the uh, simulator, right? But that's something we're going to look at later on. And here you can see the uh, fin number is set to 175 and we didn't select any call code. Then there are some optional entries and those optional entries have to do with the uh, departure and the arrival runway, but also with the values for taxi out and taxi in, has to do with the view. And if we want to take some additional view, as well as the altitude and uh, the passengers, uh, by default the altitude is set to auto, uh, the passengers is set to uh, auto also and you can see that you can also configure it here right so you can set it to full which means that it would have a maximum of 88 per, uh, passengers and you can set the uh let's say weight so you can say okay hey let's set the weight to uh what should we should we do should we also do full well let's do that uh other than that, you don't need to do anything, right? You can see some pilot names, some pilot IDs. You can see the RAC cycle, which is being using. 
And this requires you to have, uh, let's say, a subscription, right, for Navigraph, because else it will use an older one. So keep that in mind that if you're not having a subscription, you're using an older RAC value, and that might be incompatible with Flight Simulator. So it could be that if you create a flight plan here and then use it in Flight Simulator, that doesn't work correctly. So be aware of that. So it has generated the flight plan, so you can click on analyze, right? Then it will, let's say, reanalyze it. But that doesn't make sense in this case because it was already, let's say, figuring out the plans uh, which were, which it would use for this specific uh, flight. And you can also can see the alternate flights, right? So these are the alternate flight plans, and you can simply click on them to use them. If you want to use a newer or other routes, you can press this option which will bring us uh, bring up a long list, uh, including here, you can see Euro control and these are the sim reef. So the Euro controls are the ones which are the official flight plans and the other ones are, I would say, based on calculations. Uh, if you want to uh, change the route, you can change that by using the uh, route finder, right? You can uh, change the options over here. You can change some uh, different options. Uh, as well as set the route types, uh, the est estimated altitude, etc. But I'm not going to change it uh, for now. The historical weather has been disabled by default, uh, but if you want, uh, you can uh, use, uh, I would say, weather, right? Using, say, hey, upload a new weather shot uh, or use, uh, use your upload snapshot. Not sure what this refers to, to be honest, but I will leave it uh, for now. There's no need to uh, change it. The alternate airports are automatically being assigned, right? Based on the closest airport uh, and based on the let's say, information that it has available. You can see in this case, it will use a Puma and Puma uh, 1W for the uh, routes to this alternate airports. And then of course the, the map, right? Which will show us the information. So in case that uh, say uh, Bordeaux is closed, we will fly to Barcelona because that's the alternate airport. If you want to see more information over here, you can uh, select these options, right? Uh, select these options, then you will see more or uh, let them deselect it. If you lay, uh, would say use the default view, it will contain only the, I would say, major cities in uh, in this case in Europe, but it doesn't contain all the other information because it simply is, I'd say, too much, right? Sometimes it's useful, uh, but in this case, uh, not really. Once we've done that, uh, we can go back to the top, right? Because that's where we need to say, uh, generate flight. And then we'll say, hey, I'm gonna override it. Well, that's good. So it's gonna generate the briefing package. And then there are two options, right? The first option is to, I'd say, download the flight plan manually from this page. Uh, and let's say, okay, you can simply go to uh, download FMS which will download uh, the flight plan, right? So if I select it, then I can go to the different, I would say, simulators, and here you will find a flight simulator 2020, and I can press the download option. That's the first, I would say, option you can do. However, there's another one that requires you to install the SimReef downloader, right? So the SimReef downloader, uh, let me figure out where it is. Here it is. Uh, SimReef downloader is a tool which allows you to download the plan also, but also to place it active in the correct directory. And that sometimes is useful, especially if you're using a third party solution, which doesn't uh, say allow to use the uh, built-in flight planner from Flight Simulator. So I'm gonna press uh, refresh. Uh, let's see if it works. And that will now load the latest flight plan as you can see here. And then based on the check marks in front of these uh, options, it will import it into the folders. So in this case, I've selected the FS2020 directory, which will be imported. But let's assume that you're also using the PMGG one. In that case, you can simply place a check mark here and then import it into the correct directory. It will save you a lot of headaches. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, accept the values here and then say export. And now it says, hey, I exported the flight plan to my uh, directory, which is cool. Of course, you can always select a different directory if you want. Uh, also, keep in mind that you sometimes uh, might want to copy this directory because in Flight Simulator, it not always populates the directory correctly. So that's good. So now we've exported the flight plan. What's next? Well, the next thing which we need to do is go back to Flight Simulator, of course, because within Flight Simulator, you can uh, load the uh, flight plan. Uh, as you can see, right? There's only a, a few tricks for, to do that. You need to hit 
the space bar or click on space more. There you can set, say load and then load from this PC. In this case, you can see that it's automatically being uh, I would say redirected to the correct directory, right? The local state, and there you will find the file we just created, the eheim to lfbo. So I'm gonna double click it, and then it will load the correct flight plan based on the information. As you can see, by default, it won't load the alternate plan, right? So it will only do the uh, from and the to, and it will not load the uh, alternate flight plan uh, because. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, to be honest. It doesn't show it here, but I do believe that if you look at uh, into the MCDU, it will show it. The other thing you can do if you want to make it a little bit more realistic, uh, change those still numbers to match the uh, numbers, which are, I would say, um, added to the sim brief, right? So if you would have uh, paid attention in sim brief uh, during the demo, uh, you would have seen that I would have selected an option uh, where I would set the uh, flight number, but also the aircraft number. The aircraft number was the November 175 SB. So you can uh, do that, right? Uh, November uh, one, oh, 175 SB. And you can set the uh, call sign and the call sign is uh, KLM because it's uh, using an aircraft and the flight number uh, is create a flight number for your plan i think we uh, selected 467 so i think it's 467 and depending on that you can say okay hey i want to uh, append the heavy in case you're using i would say uh, one of the larger aircrafts but in this case it, i don't think this one is falls under that heavy category but you can do it the other thing which you can do, but isn't strictly required, is of course changing the uh, weight, right? Changing the view, but also changing the pilot uh, or through the business class and the economy class. So in case of the economy class, right, you can adjust those values. But to be honest, uh, I'm not sure which values to put in, right? Because if you would move this one, you can see that it, move, it will modify all the values. While in most cases, what you will see is that the uh, pilots probably don't increase in weight, uh, but other other values might increase, right? So, for example, if we uh, put it uh, over here, uh, like 47, uh, then that could be the correct value. But be aware that you sh need to set this officially to the flight plan uh, value, right? Which means that the values which are in the flight plan, those are the values which you need to enter. Uh, if you want to change this to from gal to lb right the few you can change of course here so that's uh those are the things which you need to do uh and some values which you can also do over here right if you're playing around with this value too much right if you're setting it too high then it will give you the warning right center of gravity out of limit uh sometimes you can can play around with it because center of gravity then will need to be needs to be adjusted based on the weight of the aircraft uh so that can be done uh, over here. Oh, come on. And that simply is this point, which you move now more to the uh, back of the aircraft instead of to the front of the aircraft. So once you've done that, you can uh, do two things. Either you can press fly, which will bring the aircraft directly on the runway, or you can, I would say, customize it a bit. Uh, for example, you can uh, place yourself on, a, let's say, on one of the gates uh, to make it a little bit more realistic, right? So in this case, uh, we're departing from a specific runway. Uh, but if you want to, for example, uh, start from uh, one of the gates or one of the parking spots, you can simply say, okay, hey, uh, gate uh, 1E is my departure point. Uh, it will not ruin up the complete flight plan because you can see that it will still uh, contain the rest of the flight plan, but it will make it a little bit more realistic because now you're taking off from a gate instead of from a runway. So the other, or the only thing which I need to warn you about is that it now has changed the departures to direct, right? So be aware of that. If you're changing this, it will also change your flight plan and you might need to adjust it. Uh, by default, the flight plan is imported as a high altitude flight plan due to the high altitude we're flying at, right, 32K. Uh, so once we've done that, you can hit the fly button and then let's see how it looks like in the uh, aircraft itself. Because that's the other thing, right? In some cases, there were no options to import the flight plan within the aircraft. 
It had to do with the encryption of the flight plans in uh, Flight Simulator. And that's why you see that some of the older aircrafts which were initially released can't import the flight plan. But I do think that most of them have it resolved. Uh, some of them have still have their own system where you need to uh, place it into a specific folder and then uh, load it from there. Uh, the downside of that is that the ATC doesn't react on that, right? So the ATC only works correctly if you, let's say, load the flight plan directly from using the, uh, say, flight planner within Flight Simulator, right? Also known as the world map. So let's see uh, if it works, right? It will probably uh, start the aircraft in a uh, dark mode, as you can see. I've just recorded another video for that, so if you, I would say, are interested in that, you can load it from there. Uh, the nice thing is that, uh, let's say, you can see that the tail number has been updated here, right? Uh, November 175 Shara. Uh, and I'm not sure if you would go to the outside of this aircraft if it would show the same, but let's have a look at it. Um, don't think so, to be honest. No, it doesn't contain it. Sometimes it's on the bottom. Sometimes it's on the front, right? But that would be, I would say, a nice surprise if that would be the case. And I don't think it's over there, over here, to be honest. Let's see if it's on the right, on the other end. No, it's not there. But hey, come on, this is a cool aircraft, right? So let's go inside. Pressed it too much. Going inside the aircraft. Let's see if we can get our information. Uh, so to do that, we of course need to change it to the battery, right? Because we want to be on the battery mode. Uh, and if you want, you can also uh, connect to the uh, ground power unit. I'm now doing it a little bit quick, right? If you're interested in how to do it step by step, you can still check my video, uh, which is uh, just appearing at the top, right? Click on it and have a look at it. Uh, if we now go to the flight plan, we can uh, check if the route has been correctly uh, set. So in this case, you can see that uh, the information has been set correctly, right? It's the originating and the destination airport. Uh, the alternate destination hasn't been populated, but you can do it, right? Uh, for example, uh, what was the uh, alternate one that was... Uh, now I need to look because I already forgot it. It was uh, Lima Echo uh, Bravo Lima. And you can set it as alternate destination. If you type it correctly, of course. Bravo Lima. And in this case, this is just, I did it on purpose, right? Because this is something which isn't available yet. I do expect it to be available, let's say, in future versions, but for now you can't type this in. So be aware of that, you can't change these things. So once you've done that, right, you can check the rest of the flight plan by going to the next page, which will contain all the waypoints and all the airways which we're going to use. And kind of validate it with the uh, flight plan. If everything is okay, right, going one page back, you can see that whoop, you can go to the departure and in the departure you can select the active runway, right? So in this case you can see that there is no runway selected, but if you would press the option here, you can see all the available runways over here. So let's assume that we've been assigned a specific runway because that's all where you want to do it. That's where you're going to set the uh, flight plan, or it's not the flight plan the uh let's say departure runway well let's have a look at what the runway was which was active in the uh flight plan itself that was 24 romeo so i'm gonna select uh, 24 from the list and then you can select the departure route right this is the standard instrumental departure route that's for sid stands for so let's assume that i want to fly via uh low pick press it and then I'm going to hit apply. And uh, once I've done that, you will see that it will automatically update the flight plan, right? To contain all that information. I uh, you can see that it just modified it, right? Because it now it's going via uh, this. Then we'll go direct to AMOF and then we'll follow the rest of the flight plan. Uh, the arrival one, you normally don't set it up, I would say, pre uh, prior to getting the approvals. 
Uh, but in some cases you see that some people do it within Flight Simulator because else it, I would say, doesn't work correctly. The cool thing is that you can see that the uh, Flight Plan Request and Flight Plan Report are currently shown as data link unavailable. It looks like that they're working on a SimBrief integration, but in this version of the aircraft it's not, uh, not visible yet. Uh, once you've done that right, you can still go to the uh, progress and the progress will show you how far you are. So that's how easy it is to import a flight plan, right? Simply create a flight plan using SimBrief or using fav your favorite editor. After you've done that, load it into uh, the uh, world map and then once the uh, world map has been loaded, then you can simply uh, say start a simulator with this nice Embarer 175, also known as the E-Jets 175. And then you've got a flight plan. The only thing you need to modify is uh, make changes to the uh, runway. If you selected to start from a specific uh, parking spot or gate uh, compared to, let's say, the departing point, which uh, SimBrief advised you to do, which is by default the active runway. Here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.